But what inspired you to do what you're doing, you know, now? Because um, it sounds like there was something that you saw the future did not have that needed. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I think for me, it is just the, the thought that, you know, uh, at least the future in America is uh, is you know more black and brown folks in, in our country, and you know they are the future in many ways. And so, if we're not putting them at the forefront of innovation and social change um, that makes me worried you know because I feel like then the future will not reflect the needs of most of the people who will who will be in this country but actually a small small majority of folks who you know who have money and power um, that are not black and brown and, and uh, have you found I think there's a perception that there just aren't as many diverse entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs of uh, diversity than others. And have you had that experience in trying to find ones to support? No, so I think the talent is out there. I mean, you know, we, we you just asked me about our work. So you have a cohort of 13 entrepreneurs this year. Um, 530 people applied, you know, to, to Camelback. So we took 2%, you know. Um, so, and I would say we left talent on the table. Mm -hmm. like, you know, there were folks that we just didn't support because of capacity. So, you know, I think there's there's a lot of talent that has identified themselves, and there's probably a lot of latent talent who have not identified themselves for a whole set of set of reasons. What do we need to stop doing in the social sector? That's a good, you know, question. I, I think um, the thing that worries me about the social sector in a lot of ways is the number of organizations popping up. Um, that compete with their ideas um, for, you know, you know, funding and um, the way to uh, have their particular intervention work. And I forget the statistics of how many not-for-profits, but it's many started each week, and 90% of them fail. Um, and so I, I think that... Um, we have to find a way um, to, I mean, the word collaboration now has become a little overused perhaps, but to channel the resources that are out there, all the good work that's being done, to leverage it up. I'm from the finance world, did a lot of leverage, you know, business. And to me, if we can, you know, figure out how to um, get the groups to work together, whatever that means. I see your point, yeah, you know, and, and do you have that concern and worry sometimes about just, you know, the number of organizations that are, that are out there and, you know, organizations like Camelback, you know, supporting and, and, and lifting up, you know, even more new, new organizations. Part of the, I think, the, the power of the entrepreneurs that we support is that their life experience often gives them an opportunity to create solutions that don't necessarily exist. In terms of things the social sector should should stop doing. Um, you know, I think, my, so my first thought was, and sort of inspired by someone who was here, a Trabian Shorter, she talks about this idea of, of asset framing. Mm -hmm. And so that has really, you know, spoken to me. Um, and sort of how oftentimes in the social sector, we sort of approach things from like a deficit mindset, you know, a deficit frame. And so, you know, thinking about the world of finance, you know, to me, it's like if you have an asset that you think is valuable, why wouldn't you continue to double down on that asset, right? And so I think if we begin to think of people and communities and schools as assets, we would never say to ourselves, hey, like, you know, uh, you're going to get two years of funding and, and then I'm going to stop investing in that, right? Like if you have a good asset, you keep investing and investing and investing because you want to see that, you want to see that asset grow. And so I think... You know, that's one of the things I felt like if we could stop doing um, in the social sector sort of this deficit mindset and going to an asset mindset, um, we could actually achieve a lot more. No, I think that's a really good you know, point. I certainly learned in the business world uh, many times the hard way is um, it was more valuable to spend time on the good things than the problems because um, inevitably it's the opposite. You try to make a problem get better and work and, um, and spend you know, more time trying to get it back to average than taking a good thing and spending you know, your time and effort to expand it better. And so I think it's a bit of a tough love mindset is another way to think about it is, uh, you said, you know, celebrate you know, the assets at work, you know, make them better, and that's where you should dedicate your resources.